devil thought he was going to steal and mess up something, the spirit is shifted because where the people worship, God always comes in and is allowed to be seen. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter in the book of Jeremiah. That's just the main text of our series, A Christmas Promise. As you're getting back to your seat and getting your minds all back in together, uh, just a couple of announcements. Don't forget um, communion services on Christmas Eve at 6 o'clock. And then on December the 22nd, we're having Christmas lunch. The church is buying ham and turkey, cooking ham and turkey. And then everybody else is bringing sides and desserts and drinks. And we're going to have a Christmas celebration after the Christmas play on the 22nd. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 31. Everybody found Jeremiah in the 31st chapter. I'll begin reading at the 31st verse. <clears throat> Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they broke. Although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity. And I will remember their sins no more. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to be in your presence. To have people's burdens lifted. To be in a room where you are being exalted and you are being honored. To hear the voices of praise. I thank you for that. Now I ask you, God, to give me that anointing that I need to preach and to minister the gospel that you've laid in my heart. I ask you to touch and minister as only you can. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Last week I began a Christmas series called A Christmas Promise. And last week in this series I talked about the promise that is in each one of us, which you will hear strung throughout this series. Often we learned last week that we're led away by our own desires and by our own temptations. Because the enemy wants to do everything he can to separate you from God. He wants to do everything he can to destroy the promise that is in each one of us. Because we have a relationship with God and, and the devil's job is to destroy it so that we will be separated from the promise. But God has established a new covenant. A covenant to keep the promise that God has depo deposited. I am so thankful that God is the promise keeper. Yeah. Jude chapter 1 verse 24 says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12 says, For which cause I suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. We know that no matter what we're suffering through, no matter what we're, endure, we're enduring, God is able to keep us. I want to stress to you this morning that God is able to keep you and the promise that is in you. Amen? Amen. He is able to present you whole and blameless in the presence of God. So when life seems to be too much for you, it seems to be out of control and it feels like you're losing all aspects of life, you need to hold on to know that God is able to keep the promise that is inside of you. Today I want to look at the promise of Mary. Look with me in the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 26. <clears throat> Luke chapter 1 verse 26 through verse 38. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin, a spouse to be, uh, to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. 
And the angel came into her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this must be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and he shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing that I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore shall that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age, and, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. In verse 38, Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I want you to remember, get the picture, get the mental image. Mary is visited by an angel, told of the promise of God that she would born the very birth, the very son of God. Through her, uh, this young virgin girl, Mary is given a very hard assignment. She is given a promise that will change the world for all time. She is uh, given this responsibility. You're to carry the promise. You're to birth the promise, but you're also to raise the promise into the man he's supposed to be. Can you imagine the responsibility? We only focus at Christmas. And by the way, that is a sermon, a three-point sermon all by itself that maybe I can preach next Christmas season. Because we only think about Mary and the birthing process. But then Mary is given to be able to nurture a brand new baby. To wean it from her, her breast and then to raise it into a godly man. Can you imagine the responsibility of Mary? Not only is she a, a virgin pregnant, but now she's got the responsibility to raise the Son of God. But Mary in all her humility declared to the Lord, I am your servant. May it be to me as you said. Mary has been chosen to carry the Messiah, the redemption of humanity. And you know that hell must have trembled. Oh my goodness. The, the thought of the promise of deliverance being birthed into the world. The enemy must have come up with plot after plot and scheme after scheme to destroy this promise before it can come to pass. Oh, can you imagine the chaos and the peace of Mary at the very same time? The excitement and fear that must have mingled. The worry and joy that must have flown from the same well. The concern of what people would say. The possible punishment that would be admitted. But in the middle of all of this, God gave the promise something that would keep. God gave Mary a keeping promise. In the middle of all of this, God gave her the power. In the middle of all the circumstances, the Spirit of the Lord overshadowed her, and she became pregnant with Jesus. But here's what I want you to know. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is fullness of joy. She's carrying the promise of peace. So I believe that Mary, in the middle of all of her craziness, is in the middle of all this uncertainty, in the middle of all of her chaos, she's in perfect peace because peace came from heaven and entered into her spirit. God had invested in her a promise and the promise had to come to pass. It was going to be the change of the way the world would be redeemed so God had to keep it. Now remember the book of Matthew chapter 1. There's a recorded conversation that Joseph had with an angel. Remember Joseph is the fiance of Mary. Remember now at this time it was a man it is to look at a wife who's a virgin and now she's pregnant. Had to be another man's baby because he has not yet been with her. According to Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 20, that young lady carrying the, the, another man's baby outside of wedlock was to be stoned to death. But this promise carried inside of Mary was way too important to be stoned to death. The promise that God had sealed inside the womb of Mary was great and had to be sealed. So God put in line a righteous man named Joseph and a man that God, that Joseph himself would say, this girl doesn't deserve to die, so I'm going to put her away privately. God knew that Jesus needed a father 
And he needed a man that would be righteous. And he needed a man that would also be obedient to what the Lord says. You see, we often at Christmas focus on Mary. And I understand because she carried the baby. But had Joseph not been a godly, obedient man, she'd have had Mary killed. And the promise destroyed. God knew he had to put the right man in Mary's life to be able to keep the promise. God chose Joseph, and just as God has scripted, the angel spoke to Joseph, Joseph, don't you be afraid. And Joseph was obedient because of his faithfulness to God. Mary carries the promise, but Joseph protects the promise. Lord, I wish I had time to teach a little bit. Mary carried the promise, but Joseph protects the promise. Instead of allowing the young virgin and uh, pregnant with a, with a baby out of wedlock to be killed, Joseph steps in the way and said, you ain't killing this promise. It was Joseph also that loaded Mary up and carried her to another country because there was a promise inside of her that had, oh, Mary may have carried the promise, but Joseph was giving the assignment, you better protect the promise. Let me stop here and make an observation. The promises of God must be protected and nourished by men and women who are righteous and obedient. We cannot allow the promise of God to be destroyed, aborted, or abandoned by our disobedience. We must be men and women who will face persecution of a long-standing law back in the book of Deuteronomy, who will be willing to go against normal culture standards in order to birth God's promise for our lives. Let us not be disobedient people who would refuse to protect the promise of the God that is within us. Are we people that God can trust with his promise? Are we faithful enough? Are we obedient enough? Can we hear the voice of God speaking clearly enough not to get the message confused? Oh, can I say that line again? Can we hear the voice of God clear enough not to get the message of God confused? Are we willing to be isolated for the promise? Are we willing to be judged and condemned? Are we willing to be the outcast and the butt of all jokes to protect the promise? Are we willing to pack up and move away from our family to protect the promise? Or will we fold to the pressure? Will we give up when the friends and the family walk away and abandon us? Will we <coughs> throw in the towel when we're told to do something we don't like and we're not comfortable with and that doesn't line up with what our goals are? Are we willing to do whatever it takes to protect the promise? Will we go against the culture and our society to be able to nourish and protect the promise? There is a promise in each one of us, just as it was in Mary, and it needs to be delivered, it needs to be birthed, it needs to be nourished, it needs to be protected, but then can God trust you? Can God trust you with his promise? We know that in this Christmas story, the fireworks of the birth of Jesus brought concern to King Herod, and he devised a plan to destroy the promise before it was old enough to become powerful. Stay with me. The promise had to be born. But on that Christmas morning that we like to celebrate the birth of Jesus, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, that baby was unable to protect itself. So once again, Joseph and Mary is given the task to be obedient, to pack up and move to Egypt. Listen, sometimes in our lives, the promise must be protected and hidden before it is used. I'm going to let you read that on the screen because I want that to sink in. The promise must be protected and hidden before it is used. The gift of redemption was born on that Christmas morning, but it was too young to survive on its own. Have you ever thought about that? The baby that we celebrate, the baby we sing songs to, the baby the wise men give gifts to, the, the baby the shepherds left their flock to come and look, the baby was born but unable to keep itself. Was able, unable to protect itself. He could not survive without his earthly mother and his earthly father. May I speak metaphor, meta, metaphorically for a minute? Some people are trying to use the promise before it's time. Oh my goodness. Mary could have ran and showed the baby, look at the son of God that I gave birth to. She could have bragged about the angel speaking to her and told the king, look at the new king that I gave birth to. 
soon. And Jesus would have been murdered before it was time. Some of you are trying to show off your promise instead of nurturing and protecting it. Be willing to hide in Egypt until God gives you the direction to return. Right now, take what God has given you. Protect it. Train it. And allow it to grow until God says it's time to put it to use. If you display the promise too early, you're liable to get it killed. Mm. Throughout his life, Jesus had to avoid being killed. From his, the time of the conception... As a young baby, even as a young man, early ministry, people would pick up stones to try to kill him. But he would just mysteriously kind of weave himself through the crowd because there was a hedge around him to protect him. The religious people wanted him dead. The political leaders wanted to kill Jesus. But there was a perfect time. And there was a perfect place because God was not going to allow this promise to be corrupted or interrupted prematurely until it was time to be fulfilled. There was a specific time and a specific plan for this baby not just to be born, but for this baby to die. So God didn't let it happen a month early or a week early or a year early. So geez, God was kept and Jesus was kept by the power of God until the right time so that the anointing could be burst onto the earth so redemption could be spread into all the world. Because God is going to keep his promise. And so the promise is at the right place and at the right time to fulfill scriptures. And can I tell you, some of you are trying to, to push your promise into the prime light before it's time. This morning we've got a promise in Jesus. And you need to know that God did everything he could to protect the promise until it was time for him to be the sacrificial lamb on the day of atonement. It had to happen. When the yearly priest would take the yearly sacrifice and offer it on the day of atonement, it had to be the right lamb at the right time. So God, I protected and allowed it to grow and to bring a pass the promise of the Messiah that would be the, have the ability to take away all of our sins. To be able to forgive us and redeem us. Matthew chapter 21, verse, Matthew, no, sorry, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 through 23. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, of the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. This morning you need to be reminded. Maybe you need to hear. Maybe you need to know that the promise has been born. And he came to take away your sins. The mission of the promise of Jesus was to be the sacrificial lamb. The Christmas promise for the hurting, for the sinful, is God is here and he will forgive you of all of your sins. The promise wrapped up for me is that I can be redeemed. Here's the promise. And it cannot be destroyed. Jesus still forgives you. Oh, the enemy wants to destroy your hope. The enemy wants to destroy your ability to recognize the fact that no matter how bad you've been, Jesus still forgives you. I know the devil has made some of you believe you're all alone and unloved. But the promise is, is God is with us. I know that you've been told that you've done too much and you've been too bad and you've gone too far. And you can't change the fact of the promise. God loves you. And his mission was to forgive you of all of your sins. God has and he will keep the promise of scripture. He kept the baby. He gave the, the man, Jesus, a godly father that would protect him. A mother that would nurture him and train him in the way of the synagogue. And now God has kept the promise for us throughout all the times and all the ages. The, the promise of redemption has been kept and it will not be corrupted. No matter how crazy our society gets, the promise of redemption will not be corrupted. Jesus has been born to complete his mission to save you of all of your sins. He still loves you, and he's right here with you. Will you let him fix your life? Will you allow him to renew your hope? Will you let him restore your promise? God is with you. God kept the promise of Jesus through Mary and Joseph. Then he kept Jesus, the promise, saved throughout his adult life. I know the same God that kept Jesus is the same God 
that keeps you. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 says, For by grace you've been saved through faith, and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 says, For he made him who knew no sin, Jesus, to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, in Jesus. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and you are justified. It is with your mouth that you confess and you are saved. The greatest promise of Christmas. The greatest light that can be shown throughout this holiday season is he wants to keep you. He wants to restore you. He wants to redeem you. He is the promise of restoration. Isaiah 61 verse 7 says this. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. Instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. Can I give you the gift of Christmas? Can I offer you the hope of redemption, Nikki? Jesus loves you today, and the promise has been kept for you so that you today can be born again. Oh, the promise of Mary, kept. The promise of Jesus, kept. There is forgiveness in the middle of all of your sins. There is hope in the darkest of times. There's restoration in your season of brokenness. There's joy inside of your sorrow. There's peace in the middle of your storms. There's love within all your hatred. And there's res resurrection in your death. I wonder today if you'd surrender your life to Jesus and accept his promise. I wonder if you'd allow his mission to come and save you. That was his purpose. He would come and save his people from their sins. That's a promise that we have today. His mission is still to save his people from their sins. Will you stand with me? I've got a couple of questions my mind is pondering this morning. First, I wonder if we could be obedient to keep such a promise. We're not going to be given the responsibility to birth of Jesus, but we're going to be given the responsibility to birth the fruit of Jesus. You see, we have to birth Jesus to everybody around us in this world. They need to see Jesus through us. And he's given some of you some great promises and Oh, and I can see the boasting way too early. Are you willing to go against cultural norms, be politically incorrect, so you can protect the very promise that is inside of you? And then I wonder how many of us would say, Pastor Chris, in the middle of my hatred, I need his love. In the middle of my chaos, I need his peace. Pastor Chris, in the middle of my brokenness, I need his restoration. In the middle of my sin, I need redemption. I want to open this altar for you this morning. You don't have to leave the way you came. And I know the altars. And listen, I love it when our altars are filled with worship. That's the whole reason we started a year and a half or so ago. Opening the service in the middle of the altar. It's because the altars never close. The altar's always open. So I know you prayed and I know you sought the Lord and I know you rejoice this morning, but I just have to ask, I wonder today if you need that assurance. Maybe you need the strength of Joseph to protect the promise. Maybe you need the, the, the courage of Mary to birth the promise. I wonder this morning if you just admit your need for Christ. Father, I preach my message today to the best of my weak ability. And I am grateful that you are with us. I'm grateful that you fight for us. I'm grateful that you've given us promise. Promise that can be birthed. Promise that needs to be seen. Now God, if there's someone in this room that's burned, broken, hurting, in a season of storm, in the middle of sin, draw them to redemption today. 
let them inherit the promise of Jesus. In your name I ask. If you'll just be real still for just a moment. I want to give you a moment. If you need to come to this altar, this altar is open. If you need prayer today, if you don't know the Lord is your Savior, and you want to surrender your life, then I want you to come today. If you're in the middle of a storm and you need peace that passes understanding, you need Jesus to stand up and say, peace be still, then now's the time. You need courage in the middle of, of, of a hard situation, now's the time.